Hi guys. After being with all of you in a virtual world for a few weeks now, I think that we could all benefit from having a quick tutorial in proper email etiquette, especially in that when you are emailing me or any of your other teachers, when you are emailing uh, principals, when you are emailing uh, very soon bosses at work, you need to have a professional email. So let's talk about emailing. The first thing that I'm going to request that all of you have is a professional personal email address. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I mean your email address needs to be something with your first name, last name, first initial, last name, um, something that can be identifiable to you that you will not feel embarrassed by when you send it off to somebody else. Now, why do you need that? I know you have your school email, but your Lincoln County Schools email is going to go away from you the moment that you graduate from East Lincoln High School. And you will very likely need to have an email address that you can keep from now until then that's going to assist with things for college, for work, for others. So let me show you a couple not appropriate email addresses and then show you something that's a little bit better. So let's look at a bad. I love dogs at gmail.com. That is probably sweet. And I'm glad that you love dogs. But if you're going to be talking to um, a professional in the future, the fact that you didn't capitalize the I and that you spelled love with a U instead of the proper way with O-V-E, yeah, I think that we need to do something different. For good, pick your first name, pick your last name, pick an initial and go with that. So go ahead and create for yourself. You'll thank me in the future. This is something that you can put on college um, applications here in pretty short order. I know it feels like forever, but it's not. You'll thank me later. Now let's move into how to actually write that email. First of all, there is a part of an email called the subject line. It's going to be right underneath the word to and you're going to have subject. Subject line. On your subject line, they need to be short and concise, so very brief, and it needs to contain information about what's going to be in the email. So the subject line needs to not be blank, and your subject line needs to not be something like, sup, because if, let's say you're talking to me, um, we're going to have a professional relationship, and even though I think that all of you are wonderful people, we're not besties. We're not friends. I'm your teacher. You're my students, and that's completely okay. That's the relationship we're supposed to have. So emailing me and saying, sup, maybe not so much. The other thing I'm going to guard you against is putting the entire reason that you're going to email somebody in the subject line. The subject line just needs to be brief. It doesn't need to give me the entirety. So the entire subject line does not need to say like, Miss Fry, can you look at my grade? Because I know that I something, 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 something. Okay. It needs to be brief. Here are a couple of good examples. Concern about grades. That's good because I know you are, who you are because of your email address. So concerned about grades, I would know I'm going to be talking about your grades. Good. We could be talking about an, a, an assignment that you have. So my childhood memory paper or good Friday's absence. Once again, we're not going to leave it blank. So I have no idea why I'm looking at it. I could get really anxious about that. Two, please don't say so. <laughs> and finally, wait a minute before you tell me the entire reason why you're emailing me. All right, now let's move to the salutation. That's a fancy word. Is that a big word? Ever heard that before? How about if I say instead the greeting? Let's go with that. Here is going to be the greeting. I would like for you when you open up the email to not just jump right in and say, why well, is my grade that like that? I don't think that you would walk into the classroom and just look at me and go, why is my grade like that? I think you'd be like, hey, Miss Fry, I, I was looking at my grades last night and I saw something and I was concerned. I think that you would say, I hope that that's the way that you would talk when you walked into the room. So let's not just like blast the person that you are talking to in an email immediately. Let's say something like, good morning, Miss Fry, or hi, Miss Fry. All of those things are really good. And if you noticed, 
we're going to put like good morning. It's going to be a capital G. And then we're going to put a comma after fry because it's kind of like you're writing a letter, but you're not actually writing a letter. You're writing me a professional email. All right. So that takes care of the greeting. Now that all the other formal stuff is taken care of, now we can get to why are you writing the email? Again, please keep in mind, this is called the body, body of your email. Please keep in mind that you are writing this as a professional. You are speaking to a professional and that could be either, like any of your teachers. This could be your teachers in the future. This could be your boss in the future. This could be you looking for some kind of scholarship opportunity when you're a junior or a senior. This is how you handle it. So I recommend a couple things. One, let's write these in complete sentences. Complete sentences are going to start with a capital letter and they're going to end with some kind of punctuation. Please understand that this is an email. It's not a novel. You don't need to write a million things to get your point across. Typically speaking, uh, an email is just going to be like a blip of information and it's not going to take too long. So try to keep it concise. And most importantly, please be polite, but be direct. It's okay for you to say, I'm worried about my grade. That's completely fine. That's not going to step on anybody's toes. That's completely fine. You're being polite. And it's also okay to say, here is my concern. And then lay that out in the email. All good things. I did want to share this with you in case you have never heard. Anything in an email is admissible to a court of law, especially especially your school email. So anything that you type there, you need to make sure that you purposefully intend for it to be there. If there's anything of a personal nature, that does not go in your professional email ever. Okay. Two last things. One, always proof before you send. Always, always proof before you send. Sometimes you're going to catch grammatical errors, but more often than not, you're going to make sure that your email is straightforward and typically typically, you are only going to be funny or humorous if you know the person that you're talking to. Sometimes words that are written down can sound different when you read them than what you actually intended for them. So please be careful and proof them that they're not going to be read with any other tone than the one that you intended to send in the first place. The very last thing that I'm going to have all of you do is to create an email signature. To create an email signature, it's going to say your name and it's going to kind of identify who you are. And that's going to be located inside of the settings. The settings are in the top right and they have this interesting little symbol right here. So you're going to create an email signature for yourself. So when you go to your email, go to settings. It's in the top right and it has some kind of little gear thing. I can't draw. That looks like a flower not a gear. You're going to find it. Scroll down. Even though if it says more settings, you like click that and go all the way down. When you go all the way down, it needs to say something like your name and then identify who you are with. Well, right now you are with and in East Lincoln High School. So you need to write that. And finally, you can identify yourself further by identifying what class you're in, class of 2024. If you are part of a team, if you eventually become the president of a club, if um, I have no idea, whatever you want to do, you're going to identify. When I email you back in this assignment that we're doing, you can notice that I have my name, I have the school's name, I have that I am a National Board Certified English teacher, and then I have how to contact me. I have my, my classroom number. You don't have to put your number on the email. That's fine. But creating this uh, signature is going to make your email look even more professional. Okay. Thank you for listening. Now it is time to practice writing a professional email.